Hello, my name is Marcella, and I'm glad to have this opportunity to be able to give you what God has given me to give you. So I thank you for tuning in to my videos. It's really a pleasure to be able to meet you, even though it's via via with the with the camera. But I do thank you for joining me. God has so many things in store for us that all we have to do is tap into it. Just tap into it. Walk in the direction he's telling us to walk in. And sometimes we get sidetracked. We get sidetracked sometimes and we kind of veer off a little bit. But when you veer off a little bit, if you think about it, when you are driving and you veer off, you're not staying on that same road. So you're not going to get where you're supposed to get because you veered off. So. We have to stay on the road that God has assigned for us. We have to stay in the area that he has assigned for us. Even though somebody else may seem like they're just having a wonderful time in the area that God has placed them in. And it seems like you're just catching everything in the area that God placed you in. But if you tough it out, you'll see that it will pan out in the end. That you will start, um, that you will start, um, um, having things to be a little different. That God will give you the strength to go through whatever you need to go through. So, that's what we have to do. We can't look at somebody else and, and get jealous and say, hey, God look like they just having a good time with you and I'm going through all this. Everybody's life is different. My road that I have to take is different from the road that you have to take. But we all have one goal in mind. That's winning the prize. That's telling people about Jesus so that they can see Jesus in us. So we have to stay focused. We have to stay focused. Stay in focus. It's just like you taking a test and you've studied so hard, but when you get there to take a test, your mind's somewhere everywhere. That's not gonna work because your mind needs to be right there taking that test. Not all over the place. Well we are um God's agents. Because even though we go to we go to work and we're dressed up in whatever our profession calls for, our true profession, our main profession is a Christian. It's a Christian. So whatever we do, we want to be Christ like. And in order to do that, we have to hear from him. And we have to follow the path that he has set before us. And in order to do that, we have to spend time with him. We have to listen to him. We have to move when he say move. We have to speak when he say speak. We have to be still when he tells us to be still. Regardless of how hard it may seem. Maybe we may want to say something when it's not time for us to say anything. We may want to be quiet when it's time for us to speak. Those two things are difficult. They are difficult on the flesh. Because I know sometimes I want to say something so badly. And it's not for me to say. I was at the hospital 
um, run the, doc the doctor's appointment in the waiting room. This lady was there, and she was just irritating me to watch her go, watch her asking people for money. And I'm just sitting, I'm just watching. I'm like, I just want her to come over and ask me. I just want her to come and ask me. I'm going to tell her, how much money do you need? I saw that man give you some money. And I was so irritated, just so irritated watching her go around the people. And, and she came, she sat by my mom, and she had asked my mom for some money. I said, ma'am, can I help you? And that's when um, she was she was saying something about she needed money for something to eat. And I said, well, ma'am, how much money do you need? And I said it in a way so other people can kind of hear. And then, because I wanted to say, I saw her make her give you some money. Shouldn't that be enough? You know, and uh, she was like, just um, $5 or whatever you can spare. And... Um, I, I couldn't say it. God would not allow me to say it. I wanted to say it so badly. God would not allow me to say it. He wouldn't allow me to say it. He didn't tell me to give her money. But he would not allow me to say that to that woman. And God let me know later. That, that wasn't your business. I didn't tell you to give her any money. You didn't have to give her any money. So that wasn't your business. That didn't have anything to do with you. And, but I just wanted to tell that lady so badly. I wanted to tell her so badly. That we have to, we have to do as the Holy Spirit leads us to do. That's what we have to do. And um, it's it's hard sometimes. Like I said, you know, you, you want to say something. And God is saying, don't say it. Or you don't want to say it. And God is saying, I want you to tell that person this. And I'm like, I can't say that to them. I can't say that to them. That's my friend. I can't say that. But you know, when you're friends with someone, you need to say something that's going to help them, that's going to benefit them. I don't like it when people just, because you're telling them something, they feel that they owe you an explanation. I don't like that. I do not like that. Don't give me a bunch of empty words just because... I have said something to you. Don't give me a bunch of empty words because that's not going to do me any good. It's going to frustrate me because I don't want to hear what you're saying because you're not saying anything productive. So we want to be led by the Holy Spirit as we speak. We want to be led by the Holy Spirit. The only way you're going to know God's voice is to practice it. To practice it, listening for him, because you'll miss it. Have you ever looked for something and you've looked over it? It's like, I didn't see that right there. I hate that expression, though. I hate that expression. If it was a snake, it would have bit me. I hate that expression, expression, so I don't say that. But my prayer is, God, help me. To see those things I need to see. Help me to see them. Because our blessings are right there. Right there. And because that's not what we're looking for. We're overlooking it. Our blessings are right there. And because it's not what we're looking for. Not what we're expecting. We don't see it. We don't see it. Because sometimes when we're looking for something, in the back of our mind, we're saying, I don't think it's there because I remember having it over here. Or I remember doing this with it. So while we're looking, 
we are thinking that it's not not in the place that we are looking because of those things. I used it over here or I let so and so borrow it before. I don't know if they've given it back and all these different things instead of being focused where we're at. Where we where we're at right then. Focusing on that. In that area where we're at. I worked at a job that did rotations. So you worked doing a particular job. And um, after a while, they'll switch you to other another job. So I worked as um, um, a nurse's assistant. So you had some patients. And then after a while, they would switch you to another group of patients. They did that so that you can get familiar with everyone on your floor. And... And um, it would get a little, a little um, hard sometimes because you would have good patients, and then they switch you to somebody else, and those patients may be a little more difficult to deal with. One area may be a little easier to handle than another area. One area may have um, um, ambulatory people and other areas may have people that you have to physically lift up and so you know sometimes we would complain and and so that they can like switch it you know but then that would make that person that had that particular area to go from room one to room five to room nine so it would make it more difficult in that aspect of it. It's, it wouldn't be like you would have one, two, three, and four, five rooms. You would have rooms one, five, nine, ten, you know, just all over the place. But we had to learn to adapt, to adapt to our surroundings, to adapt to the people. So wherever we are, we have to work as though we're working for Christ. Because that's who we're working at too. Even though we have a, um, a supervisor, our ultimate supervisor is Christ. And we have to remember that we are working unto Christ. Because when we remember that, we're going to do a better job. We will do a better job. Because we're going to do it unto him. And we're going to do it unto him with a joyful heart. Not drudgingly. But with a joyful heart. That we even have the opportunity. To do work unto him. Let's see what the word says. To us today. I'm in Ephesians. The sixth chapter. And. I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading at verse ten, but um, because he says he starts out saying, and this about wraps it up. I want to go um, up in the other verses as well. Um, he is this is um, Paul who is talking and was saying how. Um, how servants need to be respectful, obeying their earthly master. Um, and that's in verse uh, 5, starting um, verse 5 and going on down. And he was talking about um, not doing just enough to get by, um, but doing everything, working hard heartedly, you know, working from our heart. Because we're working unto Christ. And then he talks about having a smile on your face. A smile on your face. You know, I get people telling me about my hair color a lot. But I had to learn that when they see it, that I need to, I need to respond in a way like it's my first time hearing it. 
because I don't want people to say, oh, I, I like your hair. And I'm like, thank you. Just because I hear it all the time. I didn't want to, I, I don't want to be like that because I need people to see the smile on my face because I'm a Christian, because I am a Christian. And sometimes I may have on a mask that says something about Christ. So if they're telling me that they like my hair and I'm like, thank you. It, even though I have on a mask, you can tell whether a person is smiling or not, or you can tell by the demeanor how they are responding. So when I hear this, it's like, I'm like, oh, thank you, you know, kind of thing. It's, it, because I'm letting it come from from within. I'm letting the true, the trueness come out from within. And sometimes I'm, I'm just not in the best of moods when I'm in the store. You know, I, I just want to get in there and I want to get out. But I have to remember at all times, I'm a Christian first. I am a Christian first. That's how I want my life to go, as being a Christian first. So when I'm in this, these stores and, you know, when I'm helping my mom to shop or what, whatever, I'm in there trying to, trying to run in and run out. I want to always remember that I am a Christian first. So when people speak to me or I try to make contact with people and smile because that I'm, I am a Christian, I'm portraying Christ in this earth. So that's why I try to keep a smile on my face. And then it says, um, it talks about, it talks about, um, whether you are master or whoever, that um, that you both are servants under the same master in heaven. So there are no, there's no difference. There's no difference there. No difference. It says that God makes no distinction between the master and the servant. He makes no distinction. Okay, and then it starts out in verse 10. And it says, and that about wraps it up. God is strong and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set out for you. Well-made weapons of the best material and put them to you. So you will be able to stand up to everything that the devil throws you away. You know, I remember one time in prayer. I kept seeing rusty weapons, rusty weapons. We wasn't using the weapons that that God had assigned us to use. Because if it's your voice, you singing, that's a weapon. That's a weapon. And we have to practice these things. We have to practice them. So I dance and sing, even play an instrument. I need to practice all these things. I need to practice them. I need to not let my weapon get rusty. I need to use them for God's glory. So whatever the enemy throws my way, my weapons are ready. My weapons are ready. And it says, this is no afternoon athletic contest that we're walking away from and forgetting about in a couple of hours. This is what keeps a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. This is a life and death fight that we fight. That's why the word tells us to fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. We're in a battle, whether we want to be or not. We're in one. We're in one. It says, verse, um, starting in verse 13, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over, 
But the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. They are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You will need them throughout your life. You know, the God, God's word is a weapon. It's a weapon. He said, truth, righteousness, peace, faith, salvation. All of these are more than just words. You know, one thing that that's hard for me to deal with is someone lying. That's very hard for me to deal with. I'm like, why do you have to lie to speak the truth? Righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. We want to think, do the things that's right in God's eyes. That's what we want to do. So that was truth, us speaking the truth and not lies. Righteousness, living in a way that's, that's pleasing unto God. Peace. You know, peace is, peace is very strong. That's a powerful word. Peace is very strong. You know, that's what Jesus said to the, excuse me. That's what Jesus said to the storm. Peace, be still. That's what he said. That's what Jesus said to the storm. Peace, be still. And it took place. It took place. You know, we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. That's peace. We need to, to walk in that peace. To dwell in that peace. Let nothing disturb that peace. Faith. You know, it's impossible to please God without faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. We have to have faith in who he is. Knowing who he is. He's who he said he was in his word. We have to have faith. We have to have faith in that. Knowing who God is. Knowing who he is for ourselves. We go to church. We hear different people speak. But we have to know him for ourselves. We can repeat what people say, but we still have to know him for ourselves. Me just repeating it, that's not good enough. I have to have the faith that I know, 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 that I know. That what's in this word is true. I have to have that faith. What's in this word is true. Have to have that faith. Got to. Salvation. Salvation covers a lot. Salvation is just not me going to heaven. Salvation is the whole salvation packet. The whole packet. The whole thing. The packet includes my wealth. It includes my health. We want our body, our whole body to be healthy. Our mind, all the way down to our feet. We want everything to be healthy concerning our body. Salvation includes a lot of things. A lot of things. It says learn how to apply them. And then it says that you're going to need them through the rest of your life. Throughout the rest of your life, you're going to need those words. Throughout the rest of your life, you're going to need those words. Truth, righteousness, righteousness peace, faith, salvation.
throughout the rest of your life. We have to study the word for ourselves. We have to study the word for ourselves. We have to. We have. There's no getting around it. And once you do it, and God touches you, and you learn so many different things. There's nothing like it. It's nothing like being in God's presence. It's nothing like listening to him tell you that he loves you and tells you the different things that he has for you and explaining things to you. It's nothing like it. Nothing like it. He has so much love for us. He has so much love for us. All we have to do is receive it. God's word is an indispensable weapon. In the same way, prayer is essential in this um, ongoing warfare. Pray hard and long. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirit up so that no one falls behind or drop out. We are to pray for each other. We are to pray for each other. He said pray hard and long. The word says to pray without ceasing. To pray without ceasing. And you know throughout the day I found myself doing that. Throughout the day, I find myself doing that. Just praying throughout the day for different things. And I don't do a long prayer. I don't do a long prayer. I pray about something and I let it go. Sometimes, sometimes now, I have to do a long prayer. If I'm praying with somebody and we're trying to break something, we're trying to war. And we're warring in the spirit, and we don't turn that thing loose until we feel it let out. When we feel it leave, then we know we have the victory. We know we have the victory. It's come to the end of the 30 minutes, and I always do a salvation prayer because I don't want to see anyone go to hell. Not when all I had to do was pray. So all you have to do is repeat after me and mean it from your heart. Just mean it from your heart. If you've never asked Jesus to come into your heart before. Jesus, come into my heart. I'm a sinner. And I repent. I want you to be my Lord and my Savior. I know that you came. You died. You was resurrected. All because of your love for me. Thank you for loving me so very much. Thank you for enduring the cross just for me. Because you don't didn't want to see me go to hell. Thank you for enduring the cross, the beating, the shame, the ridicule. Everyone leaving you alone. Thank you for enduring that suffering for me. Now I can spend eternity with you and the Father in Jesus' name. Amen. And now that you have prayed that prayer, you are saved. And I am so proud of you for making that decision. You are saved. Tell someone about your salvation. Let them know that you're saved. It's nothing to hide. It's something to be excited about. Let them know that you are saved. And pray with somebody for their salvation. It's not hard. I love you much. I pray for you and your family throughout the day as the Holy Spirit leads me. And again, thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow. You make it a good day. Bye.